In this short video, I'm going to show you how to take a watercolor swatch and turn it into a seamless repeating pattern in Photoshop using a few simple shortcuts. You can do this even if you're an absolute beginner. And make sure you watch to the end where I'm going to show how to take the repeating pattern and fill a garment with your design. I'm So Heidi, founder of SuccessfulFashionDesigner.com, and you're watching Fashion Industry Secrets Revealed. All right, let's jump in. Here we have in Photoshop a watercolor print. Now this is just something I grabbed off the internet and dropped into a Photoshop file. You could take a picture or scan something you had created yourself, but you'll need some type of watercolor artwork to begin. What I'm first gonna do is I'm gonna change my canvas size and I'm gonna do that by coming up to image, canvas size, and depending on how big I want my repeat, you may adjust this accordingly. So there's not any set numbers for this. Let's just go ahead and give ourselves a little more space. So I'm gonna do 22, by 18, whoops, 18. Okay, we'll accept that. Now this gives me just a little more space to work with. So what I can do is I'm gonna move this over and I'm gonna hold the Option or Alt key while I click and drag on this to make a copy. I'm gonna do Command or Control T, which is Transform, to take this copy and I'm gonna rotate it. What I'm trying to do is I'm just trying to fill in some space around the edges and overlap to create more artwork to work with and change the directionality of it so that when I create my final repeat, it doesn't all look like it's just going the same direction. It can start to create some really awkward sort of lines in your pattern if everything's going the same direction. So Command or Control T again to transform that. We'll rotate this around. Maybe I wanna rotate it this way. I'm gonna move this over here. Hit the Enter key to accept that. Again, hold the Option or Alt key to click and drag and make a copy. Command or Control T to rotate this. Okay, so once I have a few of those done, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start erasing. What I wanna do is I wanna erase the white parts of this so that some of my uh, pattern, some of the watercolor below will show through and I can erase some of the artwork that I have here. So I'm gonna grab my eraser tool, hot key is the letter E. And I'm gonna right click a couple settings in here. The size of your brush is gonna depend on the size of your actual document, so that may vary. But you wanna make sure that you have a low hardness. So if we have a really high hardness, let me show you what happens when we erase. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit, Command or Control Plus on my keyboard. You can see it erases with a really hard edge. So I'm gonna undo that, Command or Control Z, right click, I'm gonna drop this down to maybe somewhere around 25 or 30 is probably fine. Hit the return key. And now what you can see is it erases a very soft edge. And so that's gonna to start to look much better as we erase parts of our watercolor. So I'm just gonna erase. And you might wanna change the size of your brush as you go. You can do this with the bracket key on your keyboard really quickly. So if you want to come in here really tight and just erase a little bit of that, I actually don't think we need to be that small. I can think I think we can be a little bigger. So I'm going to hit the bracket key on the right to make it larger. So I'm just going to go ahead and erase all of this that I don't want to see through. And if I start seeing some stuff underneath that doesn't look good, that's fine. We're going to fix that stuff later. So don't worry about that. You might want to keep a little bit of your paper showing that might make it look a little bit natural for a watercolor. And so we're just going to erase some of these edges. So once I've done this for one of the layers, what I'm gonna come over here is I'm gonna select the next layer. Let's see which one's that. That's the one in the bottom left. I'm gonna do the same thing over here is erase some of this part. Okay. And so we're just gonna go through each of the layers to do this. I'm gonna speed this up for you guys. Okay, so once we have erased all of the layers that we need to erase, what we wanna do next is crop this. And the reason why we wanna crop this is because we wanna get rid of all of the artwork that's bleeding off the edge that we don't actually see. So if I move this, see that edge of the artwork still exists, I'm gonna undo that. And the next thing that we do when I, when I show you how we're gonna do the repeat is gonna get messed up if we don't crop it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna grab my crop tool, the letter C, I'm gonna clear any settings I have up here. So I just wanna make sure this allows me to crop at any size. And I'm just gonna crop it to the size of the actual canvas. I'll hit the return key. And now what you'll see is if I move this object, it's cropped on the edge. So that artwork underneath, uh, not underneath, but off to the sides is gone. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come up to filter, other, offset. Now what the filter other offset does is it will move the artwork to the left and to the right and to the 
top and to the bottom. However, one thing happened that we didn't want to happen. We only moved one layer. So I'm gonna cancel this. And once I think I've got this all looking pretty good, I actually wanna fix some of these edges here, but I can do that later. So we'll do that later. I'm gonna select all of my layers. I'm gonna right click and I'm going to choose merge layers. I need this artwork to be flattened in order to do this next offset filter setting. So we'll come to filter, other, offset. Now what it does is it moves the artwork to the left and to the right and to the top and to the bottom. My settings look pretty good. You can see now I can see this seam here and this seam here and those are what I'm gonna fix so that it starts to look really seamless and nice. If you need to change this, you might need to change maybe it's too much or it's too little, but mine looks pretty good. It's right in the middle. It doesn't have to be in the middle. The point is you just wanna be able to see it. If it was only over maybe 50 pixels, you might not be able to see it quite enough. So we wanna make sure that it's far enough that we see where the edges seam up. So we're gonna go ahead and click OK. And you can use any tool to fix this artwork. So I really like the clone stamp tool and I really like the, what's it called? The, um, the Band-Aid tool. <laughs> I don't know why I couldn't remember that. So we can use the clone stamp tool. And with this tool, we can hold the Option or Alt key if you're on a PC to select a portion of the artwork that we wanna stamp. So I'm gonna click here. And what that does is it loads that portion to my cursor and you can see now I can paint with that. And as I move this, you see that little plus sign moves and it's grabbing that part of the artwork to paint this part. So I can just kind of come over here, I can select a different portion, Option or Alt to click here, and I'm gonna fill in up through here. And so you'll kind of want to grab different parts of the artwork to make this look really organic and soft. Alternatively, you can use the uh, healing brush tool. I called it the Band-Aid tool earlier because it looks like a little Band-Aid. And this one can give you a nicer result because what it does is it works similarly to the clone stamp tool with the Option or Alt key to grab the target selection. But what it does differently is that it kind of takes the pixels of where you're painting the new artwork and it blends a little bit. It'll kind of predict what you're painting and then kind of blend it in using the pixels that are already there and the pixels that you're picking up to paint over there. So it can give you a little bit of a softer transition, especially for something like a uh, watercolor that we're doing. The clone stamp, however, gives you the exact result of the pixels that you're picking up. This is another tool where you're gonna wanna right click and look on your hardness. See, my hardness is all the way up to 100, which is not gonna look very good. So I'm gonna wanna drop this down again to about somewhere in the 20 to 30 range, that looks better. And let's go ahead and paint the rest of what we see here. And again, remember some of those edges earlier I hadn't fixed, but I can just go ahead and fix them now. Some of those hard edges that I didn't really like the look of, right? That doesn't look so good, so let's fix that. And I can grab something from over here and do it over all the way over here. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and speed this up so you guys can watch me finish this in fast motion. Okay, so I think that looks pretty good. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do that offset filter again so I can see how the edges seam up this time. So I'm just come up to filter, other, offset. And now we can see, see we have some awkward spots, so that's okay. So sometimes you might wanna do this two or three times, especially if you edit anything on the edges of the canvas, you really wanna come back and do this another time just to make sure that everything looks good. So we'll go ahead and click okay. And I'm just gonna fix, I think really, maybe right here and right here is really all that I'm gonna fix. So again, I can use the clone stamp or the healing brush. Um, I don't really like how that turned out, so let's go ahead and Again, you can pick up any parts of the artwork and paint with them to see how it looks. So I think that's looking pretty good. Let's do one more offset, filter offset. And I wanna actually come back in here and do it so we can do a different setting. So let's do it at 400, negative 300. So we can see different parts. Okay, so I think that looks pretty good. Um, all right, so once we're done in here, we could do two things. One is we can make it a pattern in Photoshop by just coming up to edit, define pattern, and we can name this our watercolor. I don't think we need the PSD on there. And there's our pattern in Photoshop. We can use it to fill objects in Photoshop. However, for fashion and all of my work purposes, I do everything in Illustrator as far as filling. So I'm gonna jump over to Illustrator. Before I do that, I'm going to do Command or Control A to select everything in here. I could save this as a JPEG and then load it into Illustrator, but it's easiest just to copy and paste it. So I will copy it. I will jump over and I will paste it in here. Now it's really big. 
And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna simply drag and drop it into my swatches panel. Once that's done, I can delete it and we'll come in here and I'm gonna use my direct selection tool to select one of the white fill objects in my fashion flats. I'm going to come up to select same fill color and I wanna fill everything that has a white fill color with the pattern. So I'll come over here to my swatches panel, grab my pattern and it looks good, but it's quite large, right? So then what I can do is I can come up to object transform scale and what I wanna do is I do not wanna transform objects, I only wanna transform patterns. And it's getting a little bit sticky. So sometimes this gets a little bit sticky when you're doing this with the direct selection tool. Let's see if we could get it to work. I'm gonna select everything. It's gotten a little buggy in the latest version of Illustrator, I won't lie. So let's try and do this again. I'm gonna come over here, I'm gonna choose select, same, fill color, using my direct selection tool to just select one of the watercolor instances. And then let's try the keyboard shortcut. So I'm gonna grab the scale tool, which is the letter S, and then I'm gonna hold the tilde key, which is the little squiggly one in the upper left corner, and I'm gonna just drag inwards and hold the shift key to scale. There we go, now it worked. So we've been able to scale our pattern. We have a seamless repeating watercolor pattern to fill into our fashion flats. Pretty quick and easy done in Photoshop and then drop it into Illustrator to fill your garments. Thanks so much for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe. And for more free stuff that you do not see here on YouTube, head on over to my website, successfulfashiondesigner.com. And I'd love to hear from you below in the comments. What questions about repeating patterns do you have?